Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord who has counted us amongst the living for today. May his name be praised forever. Amen. Please turn your scriptures with me, turn your Bible with me to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy number 32, in essence, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 through 6. I will be reading from here. Just do well to follow me from wherever you're watching from. Deuteronomy 32, 1 through 6. Give here, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O have, the word of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord. I scribe ye greatness. Hallelujah. I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Verse 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Verse number 5. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. And verse number 6, which is the last verse for now. Do, do ye thus require the Lord? O foolish and unwise, is not thy father that hath brought thee, hath he not made thee, and establish thee. Please let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for your word which is settled in heaven. Lord, we pray you breathe on us. Let us be a blessing to your people. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Today we just want to charge yourself briefly on the topic, God's song. God's song. Mm -hmm. And since this is God's song, we are going to be uh, presenting it in verses. <laughs> in verses. God's song. Moses, God's servant. Uh, this is like the instrumentation before the song. <laughs> Moses, God's servant, who was a prophet par excellence. And the vessel, the human vessel, through which God brought his people out of the captivity of the Egyptians and towards the promised land, was about to leave the scene of leadership and was also about to die. Two things. He was about to be replaced at the point of his service and he was about to be translated to the next level, the next realm. We will not always be in that position. Mm -mm. It's a matter of time. We're going to be transited to another level where we're occupying a position of authority, wedding some authority for now, we are not always going to be there. It's a matter of time. Our time will be up. Alright. Moses was about to transit, was about to leave that position of leadership and was about to be taken to heaven, was about to depart from the earth and God was uh, involved fully and totally, was in charge, not only involved, was in charge of the process, was about to ordain Joshua. As the next leader. So some of the things that was happening from this portion of the scripture was like the departure speech or the departure songs or the departure stuffs from God through Moses. God dictated a song to Moses. God wrote the song and 
at Moses as a human vessel to write them, them and present them or present it rather to the children of Israel. Numbers 31 19. Some people might still be wondering that what, what are we talking about? Numbers 31 19. Now, therefore, write ye this song for you and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Are you with me? Numbers 31. Deuteronomy 31 19. Now, therefore, write ye this song for you and teach it. The children of Israel put it in their thoughts, in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 31 19. I'm going to read Deuteronomy 31 31 30, which is the last verse of Deuteronomy 31 before we got to 32, which is our text. Amen. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. We may begin to think that this song has ended. No, it hasn't. Amen. All right. Deuteronomy 32, 44. And Moses made an end of speaking all the words of this word. To Israel. All right, let's start from 44. 44. Let's start from 44 or 43. Rejoice, all ye nation, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servant, and we render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and speak all the words of this song in the ears of the people, and he and Oshia, the son of Nun. So what we are trying to establish is the fact that Deuteronomy 32, 1 through 6 is a song written by God to be relayed to the children of Israel. While Moses was finishing his dinner at the hands of Aver as the leader, God ordained leader, God ordained prophet, of God ordained judge as well, of the people of Israel. I haven't said that. Let's look at the verse 1 of the song. The verse 1 of the song. The verse 1 of the song is actually talking about where God brought them from. Where God brought the children of Israel from. That's verse number 10a. Do not forget our anchor scripture. It's Deuteronomy 32. Verse number 10a. He found them in a desert. And in the waste only wilderness, he led them about, he instructed him, he kept him as an apple of his eyes. A version of a scripture, which is the NLT, says that they were living in, in, the, in, in, in the desert and they were empty. Living in the desert and they were empty, talking about the children of Israel. If you have some money, some ujamu or money, it's still a lot easier to live in the desert. As we know today that some people still prefer to call places like Dubai, rich desert. If you have some money, it's a lot easier to live in the desert. But to live in the desert and you are empty. <laughs> Emptiness. Emptiness is not the same as nakedness. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It isn't. We were born naked, but we weren't born empty. Job 1 22. I came naked and I will go to him naked. Emptiness is deeper. And because God was talking to his people, he was speaking a spiritual language, a language they should understand. It doesn't mean they were with clothes. Mm -mm. Emptiness. 
emptiness is being without God. Being without the presence for peace. Being without the presence of God. Being without the power of God. Being without the provisions of God. Being without the purpose of God. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are. It doesn't matter the amount of wealth you've amassed. If you are without any of this, you are empty. So the children of Israel were empty and were living in the wilderness where God took them from. All right. Look at your life now. Look at your life in the last five years. Look at your life in the last five months. Look at your life in the last 10 years. Look at your life in the last 15 years. Look at your life in the last 20 years. Are you where you used to be that time? Or will you be able to say that my hand has built this enterprise just like Aaron and died afterwards? So God brought you to from somewhere to where you are now. You may not be where you want to go. Nobody is actually at this peak, at this apex. You may not be where you want to go. You may still be a work in progress. WIP, but God has been good. If I were you, I would say thank you, Jesus. God has been good. So we're talking about verse 1 of this song, where God brought the children of Israel from. From a position of emptiness and from residing in the wilderness. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's proceed because of our time to verse 2 of this song. Verse number 2 of this song. What God did for them. We are talking about God's song. We looked at introduction. We looked at verse 1. We are now in verse 2 of God's song. What God did for them. Verse 1 is where God brought them from. Number 2 is what God did for them. Number 1, God made them. 32 and verse 6a. God made them. Hmm. Psalm 100 and line 3. We are his people. We are his, his ours. He made us. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. God made them. Number two, God established them. God established them. Anywhere they were, God, even in Egypt, they were establishing a portion until it was time for them to move and agitations began. That was when they began to suffer. They began to really, really, really extremely suffer. They were settled in the, in the place that had a lot of green leaves, a lot of green grasses for their ships. God established them. I see God, a katosh, a bandura, tulip, a diakadosh. I see God establishing you in the name of Jesus. God established them. Number three, God made them a special possession. Deuteronomy, let's read that, 32 and verse 9. Hallelujah. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the Lord of his inheritance. Even in Revelation, there is a portion that Israel will play. A, you remember the Jerusalem where Jesus will descend on. It's still the same, Jerusalem. We don't have two Jerusalem. It's still the same. So is they, they are a covenant people. God made them special for himself. He carved them out of every other person for himself. I'm glad to also tell you that you are a special person in the eyes of God. First Peter 2 9, royal priesthood, holy nation, made for his grace, made for his glory, configured for his praise. Where God brought them for, verse 1, verse 2, what God did for them. God guided them. Pillar of cloud, pillar of fire, prophets, leaders, judges. God has always been guiding his people, Israel. 
if you are for God, God has always been guiding you to. You may not know, you may not understand, but the hands of God are behind the scene of your life. <laughs> the invisible, irresistible hand of God has been guiding the scenes of your life. You may go through situations you do not understand, and most of the time you do not like, but that does not mean God is not there. Or God is not behind the scene. God guided them. God guided them. The last one on that verse is that God fed them differently. Fed them highly. Fed them well. God fed them well. God fed them well. Verses 13 and verse 14. He made him road on high places, high places on the earth, that he might eat the increase of the feed, and made him to suck the honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. A portion of the scripture said, honey. A portion of the scripture, another portion of the scripture said, he made him to, to eat good things, quality things. Some, some portion says, you got some portion, some um, some translation said you got butter of kind and milk of sheep and fats of lamb and rams of the breed of Persian and goats with the fats of kidney of wheat and thou this in the blood, pure blood of grape. That's wine, amen. So God fed them differently, God fed them exclusively. Hallelujah! So, verse 2 word God did for them. Verse 3, God said something in verse 6 that's a little, a little alarming. God called them foolish and senseless. Foolish and senseless. God called them. That was where, that was the name God called them in, in, in verse 6a. Determined 32 verse 6a. God called them foolish. I couldn't kneel. Living translation, God called them foolish and senseless. Foolish and senseless. Foolish and senseless. Why would God call them the name? Because of how they paid back, what God did for them, what God has done for them. Look at where He took them from. Look at what He's done with them. As we just realized in the verse 2 of the song that we're considering. Look at verse 6. Do you requite the Lord? How do you repay the Lord? For who is for what he's done? How do you repay him? That's why God called them foolish and senseless. Verse 16. They worshipped foreign gods. They worshipped foreign gods. A size the God that brought them out of the captivity of the Egyptians. Verse 16, they offered sacrifices to them on. Verse 17 and verse 18, they neglected God, worshipped foreign gods, offered sacrifices to demons, and neglected God, their father, their foundation, their source, their sustainer. So God had to call them foolish and senseless because they did not repay his benevolence with loyalty. With worship, with thanksgiving. So God called them foolish and senseless. That's the verse 3 of our song that we're considering. God's reaction to their exhibition. He called them foolish and senseless. The big question and where we're going to start for now is that how are you rewarding God? How am I rewarding God? If God were to sing a song for us too today, what will be the title of the song? Or what will be the lyrics, the wordings of the song? God sang a song that threw Moses door, wrote a song and gave it to Moses to say it out for the children of Israel because of the way they rewarded him for being their maker, for being their sustainer, for feeding them, for establishing them, for making them his special possession, for guiding them, for feeding them differently. How are 
my rewarding God. How are you rewarding God? If God will sing a song for me today, if God will sing a song for you today, what will be the lyrics of the song? Won't we find expressions like foolish and senseless? Today is Holy Friday. How are you going to reward the death of Jesus? Your actions, your thoughts, your intention, your interactions with others. How is he rewarding God? It's not just about killing that chicken, going for the outing, wearing those good clothes. Those are wonderful if you can afford them. But how are you going to reward this walk of the cross? How are you going to reward Jesus for this passion week? How are you going to reward that period of neglect that God had to neglect his own begotten son? He shouted, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabatani. God is singing again. What will be the lyrics of God's song to you? God bless you. Give this a thought. I'll see you some other time. Bye. God bless you. Happy Easter. Cheers.